Hi, this is a video about rational functions finding the domain and using transformations to graph. First and foremost, what is a rational function? By definition, a rational function is of the form, you have your function r of x equals p of x over q of x, where p and q are polynomial functions, and q of x is not equal to zero. So pretty much what we do is we create a fraction from two polynomials, and that's a rational function. So remember, you cannot divide by zero, which is why the bottom function, or what's in the denominator, cannot equal zero. So I provide a few examples here, such as r of x equals 2x to the fourth minus 4 over x plus 5, r of x equals x cubed over x squared plus 1. The only absolute necessary requirement to have a rational function is that the variable x must be in the denominator. So rational functions are fraction functions. <clears throat> so now with regard to the domain, the restriction is that the denominator cannot equal zero. So let's find the domain of each function in our first example. We'll give the answer in set builder notation. So r of x equals 2x to the fourth minus 4 over x plus 5. So we know that x plus 5 is not allowed to equal 0 because you cannot have 0 in the denominator. You just solve a simple equation for x and you obtain that x cannot be negative 5 because negative 5 plus 5 is 0. <clears throat> so for the domain, set builder notation, we write that the domain is x such that x cannot equal negative 5. That's what we mean by write the domain and set builder notation. <clears throat> In part b, it's a similar experience where you have x squared plus 1, the denominator cannot equal 0. <clears throat> so solving this little equation, so to speak, except we have not equal to, you have x squared cannot equal negative 1. Taking the square root of both sides, you get that x cannot equal the square root of negative 1 is imaginary. It's a plus or minus i. Now, you don't care about imaginary restrictions. You only care about real numbers. That's what we're graphing in this section. So, don't care about the plus or minus i. It's only real numbers we care about, so the domain is actually all real numbers. You can plug any real number you want to into this function. <laughs> now graphing using transformations. There's two parent functions we'll be dealing with for rational functions. There's 1 over x, and then there's 1 over x squared. These are the two parent functions for this section. <clears throat> so the function 1 over x, the y-axis serves as something called a vertical asymptote. We'll talk more about this in the next video, but, but pretty much this is a vertical line that the graph will never ever cross. The x-axis serves as something called a horizontal asymptote. So in this case, the graph will never cross the horizontal asymptote either. <clears throat> so what happens is the intersection of this vertical asymptote and this horizontal asymptote, these lines that this graph doesn't ever cross, creates four regions. There's a curve in the top right region that approaches the asymptote but never officially touches them, but they do get very, very close. And then the bottom left region is another curve that hugs those asymptotes, gets really close, but never actually touches them. <clears throat> That's for 1 over x. Now, 1 over x squared, you still have a vertical asymptote as the y-axis. You still have a horizontal asymptote as the x-axis. Notice the asymptotes intersect at the origin, 0, 0. Once again, this creates four regions where 1 over x squared is always a positive value for y. Therefore, this top right region, we have a curve. It hugs the asymptotes, gets close to them, but never actually touches them. And we have a curve in the top left region. 
Once again, the curve gets close to the asymptotes but never actually touches them. So how do you graph these parent functions using transformations? Well, when graphing using transformations, we will always start with the point 0, 0, but understand that this point is the intersection point of the asymptotes. <clears throat> so in our next example, we're going to graph using transformations, and we'll give the domain and range. So you have y equals 1 over x plus 2, followed by a minus 4. Now what you have to do is you have to look at, okay, x is in the denominator, so this is a type of rational function. So it's your job to first identify who is the parent. It's either 1 over x or 1 over x squared. The fact that you don't see any sort of quantity squared in the denominator of this fraction suggests that our function, our parent function, will be 1 over x. <clears throat> now I'm just going to draw a rough sketch off to the side here about what 1 over x looks like. You have a vertical asymptote and a horizontal asymptote. The curves are in the top right region and the bottom left region. <clears throat> so now we have a couple transformations happening here. This plus 2, since it's happening within the fraction with x, is a horizontal shift. It's a shift left 2. This minus 4 after everything, it's outside of the fraction, it's after the function, it indicates that we should go down 4. <clears throat> so, remember, we're going to start with 0, 0 first. So, just as a reminder, start with 0, 0, that is the intersection point of the asymptotes. Alright, so we have our parent function, we're going to shift left 2 and down 4. <clears throat> So from 0, 0, I'm going to go left 2, and down 4. That's going to be where my asymptotes intersect. So I need to draw my dashed vertical line to represent my vertical asymptote, and then a dashed horizontal line through that point that represents my horizontal asymptote. So focus on the four regions created by the intersection of the asymptotes. There's a top right, top left, bottom left, bottom right. The top right and bottom left region would be where we draw our curve. So this is my top right region. Remember we hug the asymptotes but we don't actually ever cross them. Top right and then bottom left. <clears throat> So now to find the domain, notice that this graph is defined everywhere to the left of the vertical asymptote in terms of x, and it's defined everywhere to the right of the vertical asymptote in terms of left, in terms of x. So the only time that there's a restriction on the domain is when x is negative 2. And you can look at the function algebraically and say, yes, negative 2 plus 2 will make the denominator 0. So my domain is pretty much going to be x such that x cannot equal negative 2. My range, you're defined everywhere below the horizontal asymptote. You're defined everywhere above the horizontal asymptote. It's a y value of negative 4 where the function is not defined. So the range would be y such that y cannot equal negative 4. That's one example of graphing using transformations, and now one more. <clears throat> so my function here is going to be y equals, since you see quantity squared in the denominator, it's 1 over x squared. So draw a quick sketch of what 1 over x squared would look like. You have your asymptotes with curves in the top right and top left region. <clears throat> Priority 1 is this negative sign out front. That represents an x-axis reflection. So let's think about what this x-axis reflection would do to my graph. So consider your asymptotes, which are on top of the axes in the case of the parent function. If your curves are in the top right and top left region, then they will be reflected to the bottom left and bottom right region. This is an x-axis reflection. Lastly, we have a minus 1 that is with the x, so we should shift right 1 
and a plus 2 at the end is up 2. <clears throat> Alright, so that being said, we now want to start with 0, 0, always, and go right 1, up 2. That's going to be the new intersection point of my asymptotes. The vertical asymptote and the horizontal asymptote. So I have my intersection point with the vertical asymptote going through it and the horizontal asymptote going through it. My curves belong in the bottom right and bottom left region. So we have the bottom right region and then bottom left region. Remember you hug those asymptotes. You get close to them but you never actually pass through them. So now, now to find the domain, the set of all x values where the function is defined, is to find everywhere to the left of the vertical asymptote and to find everywhere to the right. It's not defined at an x value of 1. So my domain would be x such that x cannot equal 1. And notice that's the value that causes your denominator to be 0. The range you're only defined below the horizontal asymptote. You're defined for y values that are under negative under positive 2. You're not defined at positive 2, but it's strictly below positive 2. So my range is y such that y is less than positive 2. <clears throat> so that's another graphing using transformations example and finding the domain and range in set builder notation. Now I give you a type of rational function, it's a rather strange one that's already graphed, and I want us to work together to find the domain, the range, and the asymptotes. <clears throat> so notice the graph is defined to the left of the vertical asymptote, x equals negative 2, to the right of the vertical asymptote, x equals 2, and in between the two vertical asymptotes. So the domain is x such that x cannot equal negative 2, x cannot equal 2. The range is y such that. The first thing to observe is that below or less than negative 2, that's where the graph is defined. These curves approach the horizontal asymptote of negative 2 but never actually cross it. So the first part of your range is less than negative 2. But there's another part. <clears throat> the range doesn't kick back on again until you get to a y value of exactly negative 1. You're defined at negative 1 and above. So you would say add another component to the range of y is greater than or equal to negative 1. And that's your range in set builder notation. Your horizontal asymptotes would be x equals negative 2. That's the equation of the vertical line of the first vertical asymptote, and x equals positive 2. And lastly, the horizontal asymptote has a y value of negative 2, so it's y equals negative 2. It's a horizontal line. It's y equals some number. So that's an introduction to rational functions, finding their domain and graphing them using transformations and leading to finding their domain and range using the graph as well there. So thanks for watching.